from our studio in Southern California, the hotbed of car culture, covering all things automotive. Welcome to In the Garage with Dennis. Here's your host, Dennis Pitsenbarger. Welcome to the program. It's In the Garage. I'm Dennis Pitsenbarger. This show brought to you by Craftsman, of course, our friends at Royal Purple. If you'd like to be involved in the program, it's easy. Go to our website, inthegaragewithdennis.com. Facebook, Twitter, and so many other ways you can interact with the program. I've got a great one lined up for you today. We're going to go over to Troy Ladd's shop, Hollywood Hot Rods, and check out your chance to get a master builder to show you how to do metal shaping. That's right. You want a DIY? We're bringing it to you. Now, we want to make sure and mention Royal Purple. High-performance street motor oil is recommended for vehicles no longer under manufacturer warranty and for those seeking a higher level of protection and performance. HPS outperforms leading synthetics and conventional lubricants for both diesel and gasoline engines and is fortified with a high level of zinc phosphorus and eyewear additives and Royal Purple's proprietary Centerlink. Added technology for maximum protection, improved performance, and higher efficiency. I always say it, grab your belts, pull them tight, we're about to go jump in the garage. told you I'd get you back in another great garage, and I'm in the one and only, world-famous Hollywood Hot Rods, my friend Troy Ladd. How you doing, brother? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Now, I know that you haven't gone to the full level of fame, because as we talked, you don't, <laughs> you don't have a bobblehead, and you're not on TMZ. Yeah, those, those are my two kind of indicators of, of when I've really made it. There'll be a bobblehead of me, or I'll end up on TMZ, which might not be a good thing. It depends. I we'll know. keep you out of TMZ. <laughs> um, everything from the Black Widow and the stuff that you've done with the models. I mean, I love, I built that model. Uh, it's that or it's America's Most Beautiful Roasters at the Grand National Roaster Show, building contenders for that, or even the Great Comet we're going to talk about in yeah. a second. Now, yeah. what do you got going on these days? Uh, there's so much stuff that we do. It's, it's just amazing. I'm just so lucky to actually be able to create my dream. I mean, I use other people's you know, <laughs> monies and projects to really create stuff that I like, but it's always with the owner's um, you know, design element as well. But I, just, I live the dream. I live the greatest life because I get to do this stuff. But you know, from anything from the Comet or to the Roadsters or those model cars, I mean, those are great. We're doing another one. Oh, uh, you really? Yeah, the, the, it was called the Green Hornet or the Grasshopper. It was 1959 hot rod cover, and it was also a model. And it's just so fun to take those things and just recreate uh, with, via pictures. And um, you know we have the magazine pictures. We have to measure them, and that's all we have. So, I mean, all those things are so much fun to just to create. I like the creative process. And you know what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to create something now. In a second, we're going to talk about that comet and the great story behind a very y lucky young lady yes. that gets to drive it. But also, we're going to talk about creation and your skills. We're going to take everybody into his shop, get some hands-on right from the guy who knows how to do it. Guess what? In a few years, you might be able to build a Roadster too. But for now, let's go take a look at that comment. Awesome. Well, I got to tell you, Troy, you know, a few years back, I saw this thing sitting in the back of your shop like a, 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 a beat and abused little puppy. <laughs> had no top on it. I don't even think it had four four tires with air in it no yeah <laughs> and uh, man you pulled it off man and you built this thing and you did so many great little tips and tricks to it it's it's from the interior to that great coyote motor man i mean what's your favorite part of this car i i think i really like the the suspension oddly enough just because that was an exercise in um what can we do to get a unibody car all the way on the ground without framing it because most people, there's a lot of people, you know, putting Mustangs and, and Falcons and things on, on a frame chassis. Sure. And we thought, well, with this car, Ford has all of the torque boxes and the reinforcement that is necessary for convertible. Um, why can't we just f replicate what they did, but just move things? And so that's what we did. And we ended up going with the triangulated four-link suspension in the back with airbags. The front is a Fat Man Fabrications front end that we did... Um, full boxed subframe in the front that we cut out on our uh, CNC cutter because uh, we had to encase it. And then we also added strut braces up to the firewall because you, you really have to support the front of these cars because, you know, this platform, the front ends were pretty, well, pretty And loose. cutting the top off doesn't help. Yeah. But, you know, that's what I think when you do builds like this is what kind of, 
gives it that Hollywood Hot Rod signature. You know, um, the little things like it's very modernized in its way that it drives and looks or drives and runs, but yet the way it looks, you incorporate a lot of little things, like the interior here. I mean, I notice a lot of custom work in the dash, mm -hmm. but then also it's the look of kind of that silver piping on the seats mm -hmm. and the original door handles. And, you know, and somebody, somebody looked at this car once and said, oh, that's really not like what you guys normally do. And then I kind of responded like, well, really? Is it? Look at it. Because our kind of our whole mantra is really that traditional style with modern function. Yeah. And this car kind of embodies that because, again, you won't see digital gauges. You won't see like flames and stuff on the side. This is very classic, very correct for the, the period. Although it's got four hidden computers that, that run the thing, you know, the suspension, the engine and all that. So that's really is kind of the way that we build cars. I like simple, elegant, classic cars with lots of cool tricks. <laughs> well, I think it's just because I think some people uh, associate it with that classic 32 Roadster. Mm -hmm. And you have done exactly what you can do with a 32 Roadster. Even our friend's Corvette with the nail head in it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. been able to do different things, but yet always have a theme that gets together. Now, before we get out of this thing, um, I got to tell you, the motor is one of the things that you have done so much it. with. You got to see it. It's a Coyote motor. Let's awesome. take a peek at it. Cool. Look at this here. So there you go. Now I know you've used Coyote motors in the past, but one mm -hmm. of the things I gotta say is these beautiful runners. I mean, talk about the, the look and the design behind that. Well, the first thing we do with these things, you know, this is the same thing that's in a 2014 Mustang, the uh, you know, five liter. Um, get rid of all the plastic, all the modern stuff, you know, the this, this single throttle body in the front, the plastic runners. And we wanted something that looks more race car, hot rod. So we make all this stuff out of aluminum. This is a standalone, um, you know, individual runner type injection system and with a standalone computer system. And yeah, this is literally make the manifolds, run some tubing. And on this car, we had to lay everything down because there's no room under the hood. I was going to say, normal, simple. <laughs> normally you can see this stuff sticking up straight, but man, it looks great. I love even the incorporation of the linkage on the inside there to go to both, to both basic throttle bodies. Uh, man, it looks great, and uh, I know it makes tons of power. Oh, yeah. Well, Troy, you know I love this little comment. One of these days, you already know you owe me a ride in oh, it. Yeah. But we came here not to just talk about the shop and the comments. Time to get in the shop, learn some lessons, buddy. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, it's time for you to get a lesson from the pro right here, Troy Ladd. Now, in the body and paint days, I've touched a few of these. I know what the pick hammer and the dolly and the slap, uh, slap dolly looks like. But, you know, there's a few more tricks to the trade than just that. A little different hammers when you're doing actual metal shaping. Now, right. you, know, you know, refinishing a car is one thing. Creating a car is another. So Creating take a, without Bondo. Creating, <laughs> hey, I didn't always use Bondo. Well, yeah, okay, we use a lot of Bondo. But uh, take me through some of this stuff here. Cool. Well, uh, just just you know, to kind of recap what you're saying is what what we kind of do here and some of the higher end cars we've been pushing further and further in the metal side because you really want to make a piece that doesn't require filler. Yeah. I mean, we're joking about the bono, but in reality, you really want to have something that um, you know is perfect in metal. One of the things that you told me a long time ago is if I can buy it, then I need to make it. <laughs> well, I mean that that is a reality because when you're trying to really create new new designs and new cars to really show the world what you can do. I mean, for lack of a better word, if you, like you said, if you can buy it, it's kind of not that creative. Yeah. So you kind of need to learn how to make things. So the interesting thing that I noticed when I started to get into this on the metal side is a lot of it is just tricks. I mean, you don't need big fancy tools and you don't need equipment to do a lot of this stuff. You just, someone just got to tell you how to do it. Yeah. And, um, and in reality, uh, some of these just the simplest things were for me life-changing like oh you make that tool it does that who why didn't did somebody tell me well let's so, go through some of this stuff so, so you can teach me some tricks cool so, well sir uh, just real briefly i think I, I what i think we should talk about is making kind of more complex complex forms with hammer forms and just simple wood bucks and things like that so we'll get into that um but before we even get there we should probably just kind of do a quick overview of some of the basic stuff that you would need um the first you know the first thing that every metal panel beater as they call them in England panel beater, I like that. <laughs> um, is hammers and there is just a variety of different shapes sizes this is I don't even know where I got this. this is my favorite hammer I've had it for I don't know 20 years or something 
So, well, let's talk about some of the cooler tools, okay. too. I mean, also, because you got... Well, there's I, more. I want to talk about this in a second, but keep okay. going. Um, and on top of that, usually you're not ham hammering in midair. You always have to have a backup. So, you know, there's a variety of, of dollies. These are called dollies. It's like a heel dolly. This is like a comma dolly. This is your typical standard dolly. Again, same stuff applies. Shape them, grind them. You'll make your own stuff. And we got some... I didn't bring any out, but some really weird dollies where they've made them to fit in an area and do a certain thing. Sure. Um, and then the basic concept is you're using it as a backup. That would be um, on dolly hammering, which you have to be careful with because it'll it kind of stretches the metal. And then there's also off off dolly, and those are your two basic hammer and dolly methods, on and off. Then when you start to get a little bit further than that, when we start to do shaping, we have things like these guys here. Good old sand bags. Yeah, and this is just a big bag of sand. Um, I had a guy just this leather, some leftover leather. He stitched this up. We went to the park, stole some sand. Put in there, and there you go. Um, this is the same concept, but you can put it in your hand, so you can do something. So something like this, again, not to get too far off track, but how that works, you can, you know, it actually gives, and you can make a shape. So you can take something like that, uh, another type of hammer. These are plastic-headed hammers, which uh, have a different weight and a different strike force than, say, the metal head. But so something like that. Take a flat piece of metal. You can make a little indention. And it's hard, it looks like a sack of walnuts, but it's hard to make flat metal round. And this is one of the ways you would do that. We're going to make something. And before we get that, this tool. Now, okay. <laughs> in, in some of the things in body and paint and refinishing, there is tricks of the trade that you just never knew were there. This is one of those things you even said it opened up a whole new world. Yeah. And this, so what this is, this is, we call it a flanging tool, but in reality, it's a scrap piece of metal with two slots ground in it. <laughs> um, and what it's for is, and you can see this side has a little bit of a smaller slot. Okay. And that side has a little bit of a deeper slot. And grab more of the metal that we, so, if we want. But what the key is, is you can actually make a small flange on a piece of metal, but the depth determines the size of the flange. So you work it through with this tool, you get the same size flange and you can have like a, a flange that looks like you did it with a brake or a machine with just this tool. The idea is you just literally I went a little too aggressive on the first one. It's okay. Panel beaters are like that. <laughs> I can just fill it with Bondo, right? Yeah, if it comes out works. wrong. I got some in yeah. the car. I carry it with me at all times. So what, we have 15 seconds in on that or so? Yeah. And it's rough, but you can see as you, you, you would make a perfectly, sim, or, um, you know, the same size flange all the way across the panel. And the neat thing about this too, that you can't do with a brake, is if this was shaped, you can run around a shape and um, come up with a complex flange that has curved surface. So well, you know what? I think it's time for us to actually build something. Oh, you know? yeah. And I wanted, now this is where it's going to get interesting. Now, wood blocks. Again, anybody can get wood blocks. Mm -hmm. But take us through. Why don't you go through that? I know I've got some so trimming you, to do on this. And, um, and also, the, one of the most, if not the most important tools in metalworking is, we call them rights and lefts, or reds and greens. Um, maybe that's what we call them, I don't know. But they're basically, <laughs> they're, they're um, tin snips. And there's a right and there's a left. And um, we don't use, we rarely use the yellow, which is a straight, because you're always, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's, it's to, it's, it is to turn a circle, but the, how it works is the panel, let's see. It's the side, the waste, what I would call the waste metal goes on. So if we cut this one, if we run across here, this blade is relatively flat. This one has this notch in it. So it's, gonna, it's not going to distort this side, but this is what I would call the waist side, and that's going to curl up in a curly cue. So you obviously don't want to use this. So if there you, you, if you Now if you do it the other way, you ruin you're your just going to ruin your part. Exactly. So, and I can't even tell you how important these are. Okay. I, I kid you not. When I first started doing this, someone told me about these. I'm like, what, are you an idiot? They have power tools. I'm like, well, like, what are you talking about? There's grinders and cutters. And the reason being is we use power tools. And even like the piece that I gave you here, um, I used a Stamped big stomper. Out. 
you had to cut it close. Because these, the other thing with these is you can't really cut down the middle. It, it's, it's, it doesn't work very well. So we typically do a rough piece like this, um, get you within a half an inch, and then we use these to do the final. But, I mean, there's no power tool that I know of. Whoops, let's see if I can try again. I can almost get a human hair's width of metal yeah. with this. And there's no power tool that's going to be that accurate. So, I need these. I got work to do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Another thing that I thought was really, at least for me, kind of pivotal is the use of forms. And this is just a simple wood form that um, you're going to cut that out. And we're going to clamp it between these I'm two pieces. I'm not going to bond to it. No, we're not going to bond to it. Um, we're going to clamp it between these two pieces of metal. And once we clamp it, we can simply hammer the edge. And what I actually made this for originally was to do a little recess um, cup to weld into the, the top of a car to do a, a racing fuel cap that okay, would be so would recessed. Get, okay. Yeah, so not on top of the car, so it just looks a little bit more trick if it's kind of Frenched or recessed in. There you go. Stop. <laughs> as round as so, it needs to be. Um, let's get a bolt. I'm gonna work like that. 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 We're still too short again. So, you got it. Oh. Um, so the, what those marks are there is that this is a round, a round form. We're cutting out the middle for a gas cap, so the hole isn't exactly centered. If I threw this together, cut these two pieces the same, and drilled a hole, made the marks so that when we put this together. Everything is exactly where it needs to be. Okay. Um, the importance of that too is if this wasn't round, if this was an oval or a different shape, you would have to put the two pieces together exactly right, or this would never, it never, it come, would, out it would right. never come out right. So you can kind of see there where our shape is starting to, starting to kind of come around. Let's just get that guy right there. I think that'll be our test spot. Our sample That's the part I there. did. <laughs> there was some good metal cutting that happened right there, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, oh, buddy. And when, it, when I actually did this for a, a real car, um, you know, shape this completely around, obviously. We cut out the middle and there was a, a big racing flip top gas cap that sat right in here. It had about oh, a half inch reveal around the dish. So in the car, it really looked great. I mean, that's, it looked like it was supposed to be there, not just a big gas cap on the side of the car. All right, now we've taken it, we've chopped it out, we've sh sheared it, we've metal formed it, we've made some mistakes and some goofing <laughs> off with it. They're mostly my fault, I'll admit it. I'm gonna go home on, and I'm gonna go home and play with this stuff, Troy, and learn. Cool. I'm not gonna get a job for you anytime soon, but I wanna play with it and I wanna learn. But where were you gonna see that one piece? Um, that little piece with that same mold that you and I just pounded on is in the back of a 32 Ford Roadster, and here it is right here. All right, sorry everybody, this is the end of the episode of In the Garage. Thank you, Troy Ladd and Hollywood Hot Rods for letting me come by. Hey, are you a Craftsman Club member? I am. Hey, you know what, you got yours in your pocket? I don't, my wallet's on my desk. Does it look like this one right here? It does, except yours says 2010 and mine says 1992. So yours, you're 1992? <laughs> I'm 2010. I suck, I'm sorry. No, listen. Good, good job for you. Hey, listen, if you want to be a Craftsman Club member, it's really easy. Go to Craftsman.com. It's Craftsman, America's most trusted tool brand. Trust in your hands. On behalf of Tory Ladd, Hollywood Hot Rods, and everyone involved with this episode of In the Garage, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.